All right, so this is just to show kind of the new structural stuff that we've added. Um, so if I go ahead and just open up a new file and run it, uh, everything's pretty much the same, only on the structural tab now we, we basically just kind of clean this up a bit. Um, so essentially under our structural case, we still got our two default cases, so the flooded belt case and the structural load case. The flooded belt case, um, either one of these you can include or not include. Um, so whether you want to include it, yes or no. Uh, what condition you want for the for the flooded belt. So this essentially is just going to run a flooded belt conveyor under whatever friction level you want. And if you want to change the material density and surcharge, you can go ahead and change that. Uh, the structural case, same as kind of what we had before. Uh, the only real difference, um, we've got tonnage uh, that we didn't have before, so now you can just enter whatever tonnage you want. If you put in nameplate tonnage, it just hides that. Um, so this just runs it at that tonnage. This um, one, nameplate tonnage, this will go basically just keep increasing the tonnage until the conveyor reaches 100% nameplate rating, which is slightly different from the block chute case. The block chute case uh, runs at the nominal tension or the nominal tonnage, uh, but it just keeps uh, increasing the drag on the first load point until you hit 100% uh, nameplate, and that's nameplate steady state running. Um, so then the uh, dynamics are, are run for both of these cases. Um, this, this uses the normal, um, just the fully loaded normal um, uh, dynamics that you would be using for your regular uh, conveyor design. Uh, this one for the this case you can actually specify a starting torque and a braking torque multiplier if you want for, for that. So that's similar. Uh, the big change now is under the custom cases you can actually now enter as many structural cases as you want. So say you say okay I don't really like this case or let's for example let's just go ahead and open up um, a case like this. So with this uh, case when we've got an incline and decline um, this nameplate tonnage doesn't really work very well because you're loading it up and unloading it and if you just keep increasing the tonnage it takes kind of a ridiculous tonnage to get to uh, full power. In fact if I run that and um, so I'm just going to go ahead and show this. Another another option that we've added here is if you want to see those cases, you can just uh, click this button, and then it will show uh, these load cases as part of your output files, which is kind of nice. Um, but so our flooded belt case, that's what uh, 8,000 tons per hour. And if we look at the material loading, yep, it's flooded. But this case, this um, in this condition, this nameplate tonnage. Obviously, it took an unrealistic load to keep loading this up to get to 100% to power. And on some conveyors, it's not even possible. So this really isn't a very good case. Well, we can just say, okay, well, let's not include that. What would be a better case? Well, a better case is probably uh, maybe loading up just the inclines. So we'd say, okay, let's just have a inclines condition or inclines and flats doesn't really make that much difference um, and we'll use high high friction but now we wanted this to be a structural case so we can come over here and make this S for structural and now that is a structural case it actually just basically replaces um, this case here and likewise I could include the pullout forces in that case if I wanted I could put any tonnage multiplier here I could make it flooded I could do a SEMA I can do whatever I want for this incline that's the the load case because I went over and selected if I wanted fully loaded I could have made a full fully loaded. Um, I picked the inclines and, and flats. A lot of times I will call this um, like S for structure and then which case it is. Well in this case I'm going to call it S2 because flooded belt, I'm still going to run a flooded belt at normal friction. Um, that's going to be by default that's uh, you got to use your idea S1. This is normally S2 but since I'm not going to put it this is going to be S2. So if I go ahead and run that we will see we have S1, this is our flooded case. We have S2, which is this incline case. And if I look at that right now, um, we flooded the belt. Uh, is that what I said? Sorry, I forget what I even just called it. Uh, sorry, SEMA loading. Put a SEMA loading on that. 
and that just happened to be almost 100% right on. So that's actually a pretty good load case right there for us. But if I wanted to, to say, all right, what if we flood loaded it? I could say F there and run this. And now we can see we're at 123% nameplate. Now what's really slick is uh, a couple things. The any structural cases, so I could add as many structural cases here as I want. I can add another fully loaded case um, that I want to run. I don't know, 6,000 tons per hour, I don't know. I'm going to include pull-out forces. And with that case, I'm going to have a starting torque of 220%. And we're going to make that a structural case. So that's now another structural case that's just been run. And again, just coming back to my naming convention, I would have maybe called this S3 for structural case 3. Again, that's just my convention I'm using. Um, and when I come over here, I've got S1, 2, and 3. And then if I go to the structural tab, this is also all new here. So we've got our empty case, our fully loaded case, and then the structural cases. Now, because I've actually included these, normally this, this checkbox, so it's good to understand this, is if I don't check this and I run the cases, any of these structural cases, oops, sorry, um, in this case, 1, two, three, all three of these cases are not going to be shown in the output. They're not going to be um, um, shown on our summary files. It's just everything's going to look normal. However, they're going to be shown on the structural page. So if I look at the structural page, we see now, uh, again, just our empty and running case and then the summary of everything. But then we see those three structural cases right here or five structural or 10 structural cases or two structural cases, whatever you want. This up here is always this flooded belt case and this structural case. You can see that's null because we didn't put anything there. Those are always linked to these two and that's always going to be case one and case two or in this case just case one. Um, and then again, any additional cases we want. I also added kind of some nice, you can actually just go over to structural cases and I've got 100% SEMA with 180% motor torque or 220 or flooded with 180. In this case, we'd say, okay, let's add a incline flooded at 220. So these were just some cases I throw in, threw in the, the defaults, but I'm definitely looking for feedback from, from everyone of what they'd like to see here. We can certainly make this anything you want. Um, but again, the real power of this is we can now add as many structural cases as we want. They kind of, all these structural cases live in their own world. So when we re run the calcs, whether it makes, it will make no difference from a calculation point, um, whether I say to show these or not. This is just whether they're going to be shown. Checking that checkbox just says, okay, are they going to be shown as part of our general calcs? And when we print our report, do we include, you know, all of those tensions in there? Or do we only show them on the structural page? That's the only difference. It's also important to note that, um, like on this conveyor, you can see we haven't specified a, a, a take up. So obviously Sidewinder loops through all the cases and calculates a take up tension, but it only does that. It only loops through all these normal cases. It doesn't loop through your structural cases to find, you know, you're not going to get some ridiculously high gravity take up tension now because of this, you know, uh, structural flooded high case. I mean, if you really wanted to include that, well, then you wouldn't say that that high case was a structural, you just call it a regular design level two. You know, I could call these regular design level twos, and now they're just, you know, included in the calcs as they, they normally would have been. Um, so anyhow, I think that's a pretty cool addition and um, yeah, definitely just looking for um, some feedback on that. Again, all the output now is here. If I said to include them, uh, the reason they're not showing up here is if you say to include them here, they won't show up on the structural page. Well, uh, obviously because I didn't even call these structurals. Um, but let's just go like that and say yes, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five. We're going to have five structural cases. So this is actually three. This would be four. And this is five, again, just to make it clear. And when I run that, since we didn't check to show they're not there, but under the structural, we should have five cases here. So we got our always got our three normals. And then we've got case one, our flooded. Case two, our structural. Case three, our inclined flat. Four and five. Those are our five additional structural cases. 
Um, as far as the report, this I'm kind of still working on a little bit. Um, if we include structurals and I create it as of right now, it just simply shows. And sorry, that's off the screen. If we go to structurals, it's basically just showing um, that empty loaded momentary. This is momentary for all momentary load cases. And then the summary of the structurals. Um, whether we want to include another um, table that individually lists the structurals, that wouldn't be a problem at all. But again, looking for feedback on that. So.